So I am recording this response video to one that was actually posted by my son, Yassi. For those of you who don't know, he is a relatively new Salesforce certified admin. He's working at a company where he's responsible for their Salesforce configuration, among other things. Anyway, Yassi posted a video talking about how it's very common use case when you have a custom object in Salesforce and then you are in a lookup and you're trying to find that particular record where there's very little information that you can see about that record in the what's called instant results. Let me share my screen and show you what I'm referring to. So here we are in Salesforce, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate. Turns out, by the way, I happen to have one of my demo orgs is set up not the same as what Yossi described, but somewhat similar, where I have a custom object here in order to track applications. In my use case, it was meant to track internal job applications like candidates who are applying to work for this company, whereas Yussi's working for a recruiting firm where they are functioning like matchmakers. They're taking in job candidates and basically matching them up with open job positions, and that's what they're looking to track. But either way, it happens to be similar, but not identical by any means. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to simulate the lookup functionality by simply using a global actions. It really does not matter what feature we use it with. I'm going to go over here and let's make believe I'm logging a call, lock call with candidate. And if I go here and I can type in the comments, he's a great guy. Let's go here and associate the contact. So let's say George Clooney. And I want to go here and look for that particular application record. When I go into here, I can see that, okay, I can see which George Clooney record. But in theory, I could have multiple applications by George Clooney. And I want to see exactly which one. So how do I do that? And if I'm going to do a search, like, how do I know which one is which? So I want to, basically, the, what the ask is, how do we cram in more information into instant search results? So I'm going to show you a little bit of a hack on how to accomplish that. The first thing that I'm going to show you is here is the corresponding help article that Salesforce has on this particular feature. And we need to pay close attention over here. So here you, see, you can see it's called the secondary field in search results. And what we're talking about is what gets displayed when we're looking right over here. The secondary field is the first available field in the search layout, so long as it's supported as a secondary field. You order the list of fields in the search layout, but you don't choose the secondary field. So it's showing us that only certain fields can be used. And we can see that some of the supported fields are short text, phone numbers, and numbers. For objects that have auto number fields, as the name of the field, such as cases, the name field is the secondary field. And we can see over here where it says unsupported fields, formula fields. So my first inclination was to go ahead and create a formula field where we can concatenate the other attributes that we would like to see in this secondary field. We also can't do anything with HTML formatted fields, inline image messages, pick lists, long text fields, and lookup fields, unless the lookup field is in contacts or opportunities, which is why in our org right now, we have over here, if I look at the search layout for the application object, I could see over here that entry and then candidate, it's a lookup to a contact, which is why right now this is in fact appearing right over here. But we want to try to cram in a little bit more information into this secondary field. So let's go back over here and let's make sure what else we have over here. Unless the lookup field is a contact and opportunities for contacts and opportunities, the related account is a secondary field. Okay, fine. How are we going to accomplish this? Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to go into Object Manager for our custom object, and we're going to create a brand new field, and this is going to be a text field, and I'm going to hit Next, and what we're going to call this is Descriptive Name. And the length of it, let's just make it 255 characters. Now let's go ahead and hit Next, 
And actually what I should do is, let's go back over here. In the help text, I'm going to put in the following. This field is going to be automatically populated and updated via process builder. I know where I'm going with this. Anytime this record is edited. And let's go ahead and hit next and hit. We don't actually need it on the page layout. So we're just going to hit save. So now that we went ahead and we created that descriptive name field, what we're going to do is go into Process Builder in order to set up some automation so that anytime an application record is created or edited, it should auto populate that descriptive name field with those few attributes that we want to see in that particular search lookup field. What we're going to do now is navigate over into Process Builder. And from Process Builder, we can see over here that we already have one Process Builder that's focused on the custom object of application. Let's just go ahead and leverage that one in order to update it in, to include the additional automation that we want to introduce now, which is to auto-populate that new descriptive name text field anytime a record is created or edited. So I'm going to scroll down over here on the bottom and I'm going to choose add criteria and I'm going to say any criteria and let's go ahead and move this up over here. Let's make it the first one in our use case. Let's also make sure to not forget to click here that after it's done, it should evaluate the next criteria. It should not just stop at that first line. It should continue going down to process the other elements of automation as needed. So we're going to add an action over here. And the action that we're going to do is to update a record. And we're going to type in here, update a descriptive name. And for record type, we're going to choose the application record that started the process. Now we're going to go here and we're going to choose for the field, we're going to choose that descriptive name field. Now, although technically Salesforce will not allow us to put in a formula field in that secondary preview spot for the instant search results, we can put this text field that we happen to be populating through a formula. So we're going to go over here and choose a formula for type. And here where it says build formula, this is where we are going to have a little bit of fun. And the first criteria we're going to include is the name of the candidate. So the way we do this is we need to build it out because if we drill in over here to the candidate, we can see that we don't necessarily have a field that says full name. So we have to choose first name and then we go ahead and add on to that in order to include the last name. Basically the formatting convention is the end sign, single quote, space, single quote, and then end sign in order to put a space in between two concatenated fields. So we're going to put in first name and then let's go ahead and choose the uh, applicant, so the candidate's last name. And then let's also include, so we're going to uh, do that again to put some space in between. And actually, let's dress this up a little bit. Let's go ahead and put in the word candidate before the candidate. And so we have candidate, and then we're inserting first name, space, the last name of the candidate. And then what we're going to do is we're going to insert the word HR manager with a slash. And now we have HR manager with another space before we get to the next single quote. And now what we want to do is insert in the first name and last name of the HR manager that's involved in this particular uh, application. So if I drill into HR manager and then that person's, whoops, first name, and then one more time, we want to add in the space and put in their last name. Now, one of the other things we might uncover is that between inserting in the word candidate and the word HR manager, we are also putting in the first name, the last name of both the candidate and the HR manager. Some of those might be pretty long names. 
And in theory, altogether, we might already exceed 255 characters with all of the values that we're inserting here right now. So what we need to do at this point is to trim the characters that are included here to only display the first 255 characters in this sequence or series of characters that would appear based on the results of this particular formula. So in order to do that, basically we're going to go to the very beginning of this formula and we're going to use the command of left. So I'm putting in left with open parentheses. And then what I'm going to do is go to the very end of this entire formula and put in comma 255 and close parentheses. And now let's cross our fingers because honestly, no matter how many years I've been doing this, every single time I need to create a validation rule or a formula field, I'm always a little bit nervous. Did I get it right? Did I match the syntax? Did I forget a simple comma somewhere? So let's go here and choose use this formula. And so far, so good. Let's go ahead and hit save. So far, so good. It did not vomit on us yet. And now we can go here and we can click activate. So we can activate this piece of automation. Now let's go ahead into our simulated record. So let's go into one of our application records. And I did not previously, when I was in the setup, I did not display the that descriptive name on the page layout. For our purposes right now, to make sure that everything is working properly, we do in fact want to go ahead and update the page layout in order to display it. So I'm going into setup, going into edit object, and I'm going into the page layouts. And once I'm in the page layout, let's go ahead and take that descriptive name, which is right over here, and let's throw it on the page layout. Let's put it all the way on the bottom in like system information. Let's also, to try to prevent users from editing it, let's make it read only at the page layout level. So I'm going to go over here, hit OK, and hit Save over here. And now in order to get that field to populate, I need to actually make a change to, I need to actually edit something in these application records. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to simply hit edit. Let's go here and uh, make any change. It really doesn't matter. So here we can see descriptive name is appearing. Let's make any change at all. Link to the job. Let's just simulate. We're going to do google.com and hit save. Let's go into one of our other records. And again, let's make a change, any change at all. It really doesn't matter and hit save. And let's go into application 002. I only have a total of three simulated records in this org. And let's hit refresh one more time. Let's see if it'll actually get displayed on the page layout. Here we go. And now we can see it's displayed. So we can see that it's appearing right here on the bottom with the formatting that I specified. By the way, the reason why it's still editable to me is because I'm logged in as a system admin. But for other users, because I controlled that it should be read, read only on the page layout, they will not be able to click into this in order to change it. So what we want to do now is we want to make sure that if I or any user goes in to any lookup field where we are looking up based on the job application, they should be able to see some more information, something beyond just the name of that candidate. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go in back into setup and we're going to go into the search layout. So let's go over here into setup, edit object, and we're going to go into the search layout. And we're going to take that descriptive field and make that the second field that appears here. So I'm going to hit edit and descriptive name. And let's put that over here. Now, by the way, because I'm already displaying the candidate and the HR manager, this is completely duplicative by leaving both in the search results. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just leave it as descriptive name as the second one. We know that nothing else is going to appear after that in the lookup instant results. So I updated it over here. So now let's go ahead and test this out. We are going into our global actions. And it really doesn't matter where we want to find a lookup for that particular object. Now let's go ahead and pop this out to get a little bit more real estate on the screen. And now let's go ahead and choose applications. And now when I click into here, aha, we can see more information here. So this is where we can see that we 
can have some limited control over what appears as the secondary field for a lookup for any standard or custom object. I hope you found this video helpful. And for now, I'm going to sign off and see you next time. Bye-bye.